In the last program we wrote, uh, we set up a procedure which was to display a menu and we also set up um, a function and this returned an entered number. So we had a very simple program working and this continued allowing us to uh, enter a number until we entered the value of zero. So we'll just see this program running again just to double check what that did. While this is starting up, just to give an indication of what this video is going to do, um, last one we didn't use any parameters and this video we're going to take it a stage forward and we're going to start making use of data parameters. Okay, so into the number 12 and this is all this is doing at the moment. Um, I don't believe the output worked and if I hit zero for my number it closed. Uh, that should have really been choice. Just spotted the error of the ways there. Okay, so if we want to trace through a program, which is what we've not really looked at um, on the last video, we could pop a stop point somewhere in the margin. And that means that when the program's running, as soon as it reaches that line of code, it will stop and allow us to have a look at what's going on at that moment in time. So I hit play and it stopped there. I can then use the F11 key on the keyboard to trace through the code line by line. So it's allowing me to jump off to a number and I can see what all the local variables are at that moment in time. So I can see what choices. It's jumped off to this input value, no local variables in there there is now declared entered num it's got the value of zero and all i'm doing is pressing f11 on the keyboard every single time and that is allowing me to trace and we see the value returned is a string it's got the double quotes it tells us it's a string and it's parsed it to give us an int and then entered num has become 65 and it's going to return that back to where it came from and we can now see there's the return value and it's been assigned to num. You can hover over variables as well to see their contents. Really useful to do. Okay, well I'm going to stop that now. I'm going to take the stop point out of there and we're going to have a look at parameters. Now parameters allows us to send a value to another routine. So if I now write another routine, public static and this is going to be a procedure hence void because it's not going to return anything instead I'm going to get it to display the number that I want it to be output I'm going to need a parameter this time a parameter is a value that I expect this routine uh, to be given so um, I'm just going to call it val received. So that is, I'm saying there, I'm expecting an integer and I'm going to call it val received. And all I'm going to do in this procedure is output um, val received. Just as simple as that. Now back to our menu, we said option shoot 2 was going to be output. So I'm going to have an else if here, choice equals two. And this time, instead of outputting actually in there, I'm going to call that routine. So output num. Now if I open brackets, you can see the parameter listed there. This is what that procedure is expecting to receive. So it's expecting to receive an integer. And that's what it's called in that routine we're going to which is going to be received as. Now here, I'm going to send it num. This becomes known as the actual parameter. This is the actual value that is being sent to this routine. Now this here is the formal parameter. This is within the formal definition of that procedure. This is a by val parameter. And by val, 
means that whatever this value is here it takes a copy of it here so even if I made a change to val received here so I'm going to add one to it and output it so whatever it receives I'm going to add one that change will not get sent back once that procedure finishes that ceases to exist val received no longer exists nor do the values in it so just to demonstrate that I'm going to do a console right line here I'm going to output num so if we run this program now I'm going to input a number I'm going to enter um, 45 and I'm going to output and you can see 46 is there from the first time it's output and 45 from the second console right line it's on the same line because I add that as a console dot right if I have it as a right line you'll put each one on a separate line uh, just so that we know that this how this is working I'm going to put stop point there so that means as soon as I choose option 2 we can trace through the code so if I hit play input number I'm going to enter 99 okay now I'm going to hit 2 at this point it's going to stop because it's hit my stop point we can now trace through so choice does equal to it is equivalent to it so it's going to jump here and now it's saying it's going to call that procedure output num and it's going to send this actual parameter which is the contents of num now hovering over that we can see it says 99 press F11 again and it's jumped to this procedure val received has received a copy of that value so this is by val it's received a copy of that value the value received is going to be incremented so I'm adding one to it you can see there it's now become 100 and we can also see at the bottom there it's been changed F11 again and that would have output the 100 this routine now finishes and it returns back to where it called it so it returns back to the calling routine num is still 99 because the value of 100 only existed in that routine that we was in a moment ago that no longer is running now I'm going to output that and I can check there it's now output 99 which is what that console right line is doing hit F11 and it gets back into my loop to allow us to display the menu again and put a new line in that is therefore an example of um, using parameters that's one parameter there we can have as many parameters as we like so if I adapt this program to give us uh, say two numbers okay and when we enter two values we'll have two numbers and imagine when we output if we want to output both values so I'm just going to call that val1 and I'm also going to have an int val2 Grab that. Okay, so this has now got two parameters. Which if I go back up here, this has now got a red line because it's no longer valid. Because if I put my, if I go to type into here, you'll see now pops up. It's expecting two values, two parameters. So if I wanted to send both them numbers to it, num, comma, and you can see the highlighted in bold. I can output my num2 and therefore that is passing two parameters there are two formal parameters and I can output both of those again I can run the program 
just to check it does what it's supposed to 33 65 and output 34 and 65 now I can send parameters to a function as well if I like I can send them to a procedure but that is how I pass parameters if I want to be able to return a value imagine this procedure was actually let's write a new one I'm going to take a copy of this exact copy and I'm going to call this the add one procedure and that's going to take value one value two it's going to add one to each of them I can put a ref in front and the ref turns it into a reference parameter which means any changes made to this in this routine will be returned will be referenced back to the original value so therefore if I had val1 equals val1 plus 1 and val2 equals val2 plus 1 those are processing commands I'm not outputting there but any changes will go back to the procedure that called it and let me just pop this in my output so before I output I'm going to run or execute the add1 num num2 notice I've put ref there as well for reference okay let's take that out so let's double check what it does I'm going to put a stop point in there just to trace through it always good to see always a useful command to use so you can see what is actually going on with the program I'm going to input two numbers put 34 and we'll put 99 output numbers right go to here f11 f11 add one procedure now it's sending 34 and 99 look I can hover over them and see those numbers that has become 34 and that's 99 now it's a ref so it doesn't take a copy this value directly references the last one and you can see our variables there val1 is increased to 35 val2 is increased to 100 this returns that is now 35 and that is now 100 and you can see that that is referenced those changes output the numbers a copy has been received there and we output 35 and 100 so those changes remain with a reference when it's a by val and there's no ref then the changes are not kept so that is the difference between a reference parameter and a by val which is worn without the ref I hope that helps with a few further examples of procedures, functions and parameters within C Sharp. Many thanks for watching.